Hello and welcome to this week's lecture in SLUT 7829 Text Analysis and Corpus Linguistics. So in this week, we're going to do a case study in which we look at swearing in Irish English. So before we start, I'll just give you an uh, outline of what we're going to do today. So we'll start with a recap, which just reminds you of what we've done so far. Then we'll focus on case study. We'll look at swear words in Irish English. And I just want to warn you, we'll basically have a look at and um, and see swear words, so curse words, right? So please don't uh, be offended by that. It's really just about, you know, doing a case study. And then we'll close off the lecture by having a look at the key points of what you've done and also give you an outlook of what we are going to do in the following week. All right, let's start with part one, which is just, just a recap, all right? So in this part of the lecture, I just want you to remember what we've done so far, right? So, so far in the previous sessions, you've learned about what corpus linguistics is, basically means that, you know, can be considered a field and a methodology, a field. Uh, as a field, it focuses on technical aspects of how to compile and store and distribute corpora. And when it's considered a methodology, then basically it uh, means that whenever you use corpus data to answer a research question, then you are performing corpus linguistics, right? You've also learned about uh, what you need to consider when you compile a corpus that can't just, you know, uh, randomly just take data and it's a corpus. You have to basically um, think about why you want to collect data, what type of data. You have to think about representativeness and copyright issues as well uh, as, uh, as ethical concerns, all right? So basically, that was what we talked about when we looked at uh, compiling corpus. Then, and most importantly for this session, we were introduced to AntConc, which is a very popular corpus tool. And we'll expand on using AntConc um, in this session because we're going to do a case study. So as I told you before, in the upcoming weeks, basically, we'll uh, have a look at case studies. We'll also look at other aspects like regular expressions. But we'll use case studies to basically explore what you can do with corpus data, what different steps are involved when using uh, corpora in your research. And here we're just going to show you how you can do that, right? So when you think about what you're going to do is, uh, or what you've learned, you've learned how you can load a corpus into Anconc, right? And how you can find words and phrases in corpus data. You've also learned how you can compare uh, corpora, but that's not relevant for today's uh, session. In today's session, it's really just about finding words and phrases in corpus data, right? So this is very, very similar to the first part of the case study, right? But in addition, today you'll learn uh, what you can do um, with those results that you obtained by Anconc, right? And how you can use these results to answer a research question. All right, let's start with a case study. So um, before we actually get into doing it, uh, I just want to um, give you a little bit of background, all right? So in this lecture, we'll do a case study in which we try to answer the question, do men or do women swear more in Irish English? Uh, and we're using the Ice Iron and Corpus, right? Um, so if you... Um, want to use the corpus data, I've made it available uh, on Blackboard, right? You can download the Ice Iron and Corpus. And basically what I'm going to show you here today, uh, we'll go over this together in the tutorials, right? So here I'm going to show you how you can do that. And then in the tutorials, basically we'll do it together. And I think this is really crucial uh, because in this, or this case study is an example of how you can use corpora to answer research questions, and it shows you the way to process data. Um, but most importantly, you can uh, transfer what you see here today to other tasks and research questions. So this is really just an example, and you can look for other things or analyze different uh, data sets, right? But basically, this case study is just to give you an idea of what steps are involved when you do corpus-based uh, research or when you're involved in corpus linguistics. Right. So uh, the next slide will give you basically the different steps that are involved in the analysis. Right. So in this case study, um, we're going to have a look only at the spoken dialogue files of Ice Ireland. And in those, we're going to have a look at the different forms of um, the swear words, fuck, shit, crap, whore, piss and bitch. And then 
after we found all those swear words, we then need to determine who is the speaker, like um, what speaker has uttered that swear word, right? That's a bit important uh, because we need to determine whether uh, the speaker was uh, a man or a woman, right? Then we're going to count how often the speaker has used the swear word and add this information to the spe speaker information spreadsheet. The uh, spreadsheet with the speaker information is available on Blackboard, and this will also be uh, key for the case study, as you'll see later. Now, once we've added that information, so we know for each speaker um, whether they've used the swear word or not, then we calculate the relative frequency of the swear words for each age group and the genders. And then finally, we'll visualize the results as a bar graph. Right. So these are the five steps that uh, are involved in today's analysis. All right. Let's just switch over to Ancog. OK, so here we're in Ancog now. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to load a corpus um, so that we can basically look for our swear words. All right. So here you see that there is no corpus data loaded. So in this case, I'm just going to um, use the uh, quick corpus um, tool and in this case I'm going to um, load the uh, ice island data. You might not be able to see it uh, because I'm probably not sharing the right one but what I'm doing is I'm going to ice island then I'm going to uh, have a look at the uh, txt files not the doc files the txt files then I'm going to ice spoken running txt. And then I'm going to load the first 100 files, those files which start with S1A. And then you have 001 to uh, 100, right? So that's basically what we want. We want the first 100 files of the ice iron corpus. And then I click on open here. And what uh, you'll see now is that here on the left, you'll see that um, the files are loaded, right? Okay, so as I told you before, we're not going to look at all swear words. We're going to look at uh, specific swear words, all right? And you already learned what you can do when you want to look for several patterns at once. You can use the advanced search box. And here I'm going to say I'm going to look for PIS. And if you have the star, that means you're only uh, you're also looking at pissed and pissing uh, and uh, things like that, right? Also, we use I uh, want to look at fuck and whore and crack and bitch, right? So now uh, in the dialog box, you should see that I have um, bitch star, crap star, fuck star, piss star, whore star. Um, and these would be all the forms that we want. And then we go to the bottom right and there we click on apply. And now when we go and click on start, we see in the um, quick tab all the different instances of um, of these different words all right and in our example we have found 168 instances uh, of swear words right so we've crap we fuck we have peace um, we've uh, we have an instance of bitch and so on Right, so these are the swear words. And now basically we have uh, the uh, instances of our swear words. And as a next step, we're going to uh, save the results and we're going to export them, uh, save current tab results. And then we're just going to save this as quick results. All right, going to do this here. Right, so in the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, increase the context size, right? And we're going to make it as big as we can. And the biggest is 25 tokens. And the question is, why do we need that? All right, I'm going to show you 
why we do this here in the first instance. So here we can see that this instance of crap was uttered by speaker A in file S1A18. So in the 18th file of the spoken um, informal dialogue section. And the speaker here who uttered crap was A. Now we need this for all the different swear words in our data. And sometimes when someone, for example, says a swear word um, um, during a longer utterance, then the um, we need to determine who the speaker is, right? And when we have only 10 words before the swear word, then that might not be enough to determine who the speaker is, right? So now that we have more tokens as a context window, we'll hit start again. And we'll get exactly the same results, but the context window will be bigger, right? And then we're going to save the results again. Save current tab results. And here we're going to save it as a uh, quick results long. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right. And uh, then we can actually close and conk. So let me just stop this for a moment. Okay. Um, actually, we uh, I've done a little mistake. And so this is actually not a bad thing. You can learn something from this, right? So as a first step, I'm going to go back to the 10 tokens context, which is um, the default. And then I'm going to change this because we have bitch, crap, fuck, piss, whore, but we don't have shit. So I missed shit. So we have to add this, all right? And now I can actually apply this and then start. And now we have a lot more hits. We have 225. I'm going to save this result um, as quick results. Yes. And we're doing the same thing here. We're going to increase the context window. And then we're going to hit start. And then we're going to export this to our um, SL long results. OK, so now we can close and conquer. Sorry about this. But actually, you know, you see it's uh, you can recover from mistakes quite, quite swiftly. All right. I'll see you in Excel in a moment. OK, so now you should see the folder in which I have the results, right? So these are the results with little context, so only 10 tokens to the left and right. And here, uh, these are the quick results with uh, 25 tokens to the left and the right, right? So if we open uh, that uh, file, it looks like this, right? So what we'll do is we'll just copy this, and then we're going to open uh, Excel and here, I already have it open, but I'm going to put it in again, just so you see what I'm doing, right? So when you open it, it doesn't look very nice, right? It uh, doesn't help you that much. But trust me, it'll be better in a moment. So as a first step, we click here on the first row, we click on the one here, then we do a right click, and then we add um, one row that's empty at the very top. And we click on the A and we also add a row here. And the first one, we're going to call this ID. And then we just say one, two, three. And then when you highlight this and you go to the bottom right, you can double click on this and we'll automatically number all the different instances. So whenever you work with uh, data, it really makes sense to create one ID column, uh, which just uh, is a running number, right? OK, so then the next thing, um, we could call it file. I'm going to call it text ID. And then here, I'll, I'm going to show you what this looks like. This is what came before the swear word. So I'm going to call it pre. Then this is our swear word. I'm going to call it hit. And here we see what comes after the swear word. So I'm going to call it post, all right? So this is essentially what this looks like, right? So now you have an ID, you have the text ID, which is uh, the file name. 
Then you have what comes before the swear word. You have the swear word itself, and you will have what comes after the swear word. All right. And then uh, I'm going to create another uh, spreadsheet, and I'm going to open the long results here, and I'm going to put them in here. And the only thing that we need here is that B column, all right? That's the only thing we need. So we're going to copy this, and we're going to, um, actually, let me, I don't want anything here. What I want is I want to post something uh, here. So I need a new column. Uh, after the text ID and before the short context, right? So this is again, uh, the results with a little context, so with 10 words context. And here I'm going to just copy the results here. And I'm going to put them in here. And then I'm going to call this SPK Dot ref. So that stands for speaker. And you'll understand why in a moment. All right. When you have a look at it, it's just more context. It's the same as in the pre, right? So here in the pre, you also see that before the before the swear word, you have uh, ambulance was crap, right? And then here you also have ambulance was, right? Now I'm going to show you something, right? We're going to use this column to extract our speakers. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to highlight this column and then going to find and select and replace. And here, what we'll do is we'll say a star and dollar sign. And here, replace it with, we'll just leave this empty. And I want you to understand why. So remember, we, we want to understand who says this swear word, right? In this case, the crap. And when we go here, we see that in this case, it was speaker A, right? And we know that because there was a dollar sign and then A. So everything that comes before the dollar sign is irrelevant, right? We're only interested in the speaker who uttered that swear word, right? So um, basically what we want is we want to remove everything before a dollar sign. So that would mean that the first thing that would be... Um, that would occur if we did this would be the A. So let's try this out. We'll do this for the long column, right? So for the uh, speaker ref column. And now we're going to replace all. And you see that it's worked for most of the instances, but not all. Like these are instances where it hasn't worked, right? Because here you don't see a speaker. But this would be, uh, this would tell us that the speaker who has uttered this way what was speaker A, also speaker A, speaker A, speaker A. Here it was speaker D, speaker D, speaker B, and so on, right? We're going to clean this a little more, though. We're going to say, whenever you find a point, pointy bracket, and then remove everything after it. And if we also apply this, then you see that it has basically cleaned our results. I just have one question. Um, because I think I actually need to do this again. Because look, we only have 100 instances. Well, how could this be? That was actually a mistake. So let me show you what happened. So here we had 100 hits. And that means that only the first 100 hits were exported. But we want all hits another mistake hmm. so we need to go over this again so again we're going to say um we want to use a list right and there we had um fuck star uh, then shit uh crap oh Bitch. And have I got all of them? Piss. Hmm. So missed this one. So add that one and then apply. And then we're going to save this again. And now we have our 222 again. 
So now we're going to save this. As the quick results. Yes, I want to override it. Then here we're going to increase the number of tokens that we want before this way went. And again, we're going to export this. Going to use this as long, yes. And then we're just going to repeat what we've just done. So this is actually really important for you. You might not understand it, but it's very important that you understand that um, when you work with corporates, oftentimes that you have to go back and forth with uh, the data, right? So this is really a common thing. And I just want to show it to you because this is really what corpus work looks like. You go back and forth with your um, with your data. So again, we have this. We're going to call this the ID. Going to say one, two, three. We're going to highlight these cells. Then we'll go to the bottom right and we double click. Here we're going to say text.id. Then here we've learned, we insert something that we call speaker ref. This we're going to call free. No, just free. And this we call hit. This we call post, right? Then here we have the same thing. We remove this. And we're going to add the long results. Okay, and now this is the pre-results. And here we see now that we have our 225 instances. And we're going to put them and store them here in the speaker ref. Now we're going to recover the speakers again. So we'll say star and dollar sign only for this column, right? So only this column can be highlighted. Then we're going to say replace all. And then we're going to say pointy bracket star, replace all. Okay. So now you see that we have recovered the speakers for quite a number of our swear words. But for some, it didn't work, right? You see this? So for some, basically, we don't have the speaker. So in this case, what you can do is um, you can look for these individually. Like, for example, here we see that um, you have a sequence right before our swear word that says comes up on the screen. So we recover the speaker for this instance by now going back to Ankong, right? And then we're going to use just the normal window. We say words, say start. And then here you see this is the instance that we're talking about because here it says it's crap, right? So we click on it and now you see why going back to the data really is helpful. Now we see that it's speaker D who has said that, right? So in this case, we can enter a D here. I'm going to make this red just so that you see how this works, right? And here, um, we're going to also copy a section for another instance where we don't know who the speaker is, right? So here, again, we don't know who the speaker is. So we're going to copy, and she was like, oh, and then we're going to go back into Uncon. We're going to go to click uh, quick. And then here, because this was right before the swear word, which was fucking, we know this is the instance. And here we can see that was speaker S1A005C. So this instance was by speaker C, right? So in my case, I'm going to make this red. You don't have to do this, but I just want to show you how you can identify speakers. Here is another instance that we need to find. So I go to this and just copy what was right before the swear word. Then I go to Ankonk, paste it in there, say start, and here we only have one instance. So that makes it very easy. And this is speaker A, right? 
So this means we can add an A here in the speaker column. Another tip that I'd like to give you is that when you have something like this, right, when you're working with spreadsheets, uh, it really makes sense if you click in the row below the first row and then go to view and say freeze top row. And that way, when you scroll down, you'll still have the headings here. All right. Now I'm going to pause the recordings and what I'm going to be do, uh, what, I'll, what I'll be doing is I'll just copy things here from uh, what came immediately before the swear word. And I'm going to go to the quick window. I'm going to enter this here, say start. And then for each of these instances, I'm going to have a look at who the speaker is that has uttered that swear word. All right, here it was speaker A. And then I'm going to highlight this and make it red. Okay, so I'm going to go do this for all of the different instances um, where we do not have a speaker. All right? So this is what we're going to do now. But because it will take too much time, I'm going to stop the recording here. And then I'm going to uh, start the recording again once I have all the... Um, all the speakers recovered. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so now I hope that you can uh, see the finished uh, spreadsheet, right? So now we have the um, the ID, then we have the uh, text ID, so the file, then we have the speaker who produced the uh, swear word, we have the previous content, the token or the hit, and then we have what comes after, all right? So uh, when you have a look, you see that there are actually quite a number of speakers that we had to recover manually, right? That's just the way it is, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, just let me stop this real quick here. Um, so sorry, I just realized that I didn't have all the uh, things that I needed. So now you see the final spreadsheet, right? So you have the ID, the text ID, the speaker reference, what comes before the swear word, the hit itself, you see all the different forms here, and the post, right? Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add this to um, the speaker information. But before we do this, one more thing. So here you see that... Um, when we have a look at the speaker data, let me have a look at what that looks like. Um, let's have a look here. Is it here? No. No, that's not what I need. So I'm going to go and open the speaker info here. Okay. So now you see that this is the speaker information spreadsheet, right? And uh, what you can see here is that you have a text ID here and it only has the text. It doesn't have the the name of the file, right? And then you also see here that it's speaker, uh, speaker ref, so not text ID, speaker ref. Here you have only the, um, the letters. And for speakers where you don't know who uttered something, then there's a question mark, right? So if we go back to the other spreadsheet, we see that here we have the file name, but also the title, and we want to get rid of this. And we can get rid of this by going to replace and then say, whenever you find an empty space, delete everything that's behind it. So here's a space and then a star on asterisk. And then we say, um, replace all. And now that we've done that, we only have the text ID and we have the speaker reference. Right, I'm going to just copy these two columns. So this is all that we need from now on. It's just the file and the speaker ref. And I'm going to copy it and put it after the last column here. All right, like this. Okay, and we don't need all this information. I'm just going to make it smaller so that we have a better overview of the data, all right? Okay, now here, this is what we just added. Um, I'm going to make it uh, separate the color out a little bit. 
So this is what we have from our concordances, right? And I just have the text ID in the speaker. And here I'm going to put something in that I call swear word. Or swear words, actually. And now we want to count how many uh, swear words were uttered by speaker B in file S1A005. You can do that manually, right? And then search for the speaker. So this would be speaker B in file five. So here we would have to add uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that speaker has uttered 10 swear words, right? So you can do it like that manually. Another way to do that is to use account if. And so we say equals and then count ifs. And now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a range. Actually, let me let me just copy this and make this a little bit bigger. We'll make it easier later on, right? So now the search range will be um, uh, sorry, first range will be just the files here. And then uh, we're going to we're going to select this field where there's just the text ID. And the next thing is the speaker range that we need to put in. So we're going to select the speaker range here. Then colon, and then we go to the very top again. And here we're going to say speaker range. And then we're doing something else. We're going to add dollar signs before the um, the letters and the numbers of the ranges here, but only for the ranges. And that means that when we change, uh, when we basically pull this down, um, the range will remain constant. So then again, we go to the bottom right um, and we double click. And then we have um, the information. Let's, let's go back up to this, right? So here automatically it has counted how often the combination S1A005B occurs in this range, right? That's why we use the ranges here. And for each speaker, like the combination of S1A001 and B, it looks, does this combination occur in this kind of, in these fields? And then counts that up, right? So now I'm going to um, show you the, here you see that there's actually a zero written, but underlying the zero is this command. So in order to have the true numbers, I'm going to copy this. So control C. And I'm going to paste the values in, and now we actually have the real numbers here, right? And now I can delete this. We no longer need this. And then I also don't need um, any speakers that are not in S1A, right? So because we only have uh, S1A files. So I'm also going to delete everything below here. All right? These are speakers that occur in other text types in the ICE data, all right? So now what we've done is we've looked for the swear words, right? And now in this ICE uh, bio data, we've counted up how many swear words each, each speaker has said, all right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, highlight our table. And then we are going to insert a pivot table from range and table. Uh, we're going to create a new worksheet. And now I want to have the um, sex and the age. And here I want to have the swear words and the word counts, right? And now what this enables us to do is to just say, we want to calculate the relative frequency now, right? And the relative frequency would be um, the number of swear words 
oh, let's actually do that. Let's, let's just say number of swear words, which in this case is zero, divided by the number of words, which is 310 times 1,000. And that's then the relative frequency for women, for swear words used by women, zeros, zero to 18 um, per 1,000 words, right? So here, I'm just going to pull this down. We're not interested in the NAs for the moment. So now we need to adapt that, right? So here, these have uttered 53 words, uh, swear words, and they've overall produced 69,651 words, right? Then here, they've produced 61 swear words, and they've produced 32,000. 898 words. Here they've produced three words, three swear words, and they've produced 4890 words. They haven't produced any swear words, but they've produced 35085. They've produced nine swear words, and they've overall produced. 27,159 words, right? So these are the relative swear words for the women. Now let's call it women, right? And also I'm going to show you, uh, no, I'm not going to do that, sorry. Just going to leave this there. No, oh, I don't want that now. We're going to do the same thing here for the men, right? So equals zero divided by 235 times a thousand. So this gives us the relative frequency of uh, per thousand words, right? So here this means assuming that um, this age group had used a thousand words, how many swear words would they have used? And we have to do that because um, the numbers aren't equal, right? So you have to make the numbers of the women and the men comparable. And so in order to do this, we calculate the uh, relative frequency. And if you have a look at the numbers, you'll see that the women actually produced um, many more words typically than the men, right? So this then will be results for our women. This will be the results for our men. Oh, sorry, I have to pull this down. And actually, this will be 0 to 18. This will be 19 to 25. This will be 26 to uh, uh, 33. This will be 34 to 40, 41. 42 to 49. And this is 50 plus, right? And here we're just going to round this. So here we're going to say six, seven, one. Here we're going to say, oh, let's make it actually to one decimals. All right, so here will be seven. Around this, this will be 61. It will be 33, okay. So now this is the table of the relative frequencies. And now we can um, insert a figure. And we can just use this one. And now we can clean or make this figure nicer. We can say um, relative frequency of swear words by age and gender in 
Ireland, right? And then we can also add things. Like for example, we can say, we want to add access titles. So here, this would be relative frequency, a thousand words, right? Here, I want this to be like this. Here we can say, these are our age groups, right? And then we can also add data labels. And when there are data labels here that we don't want, like this one, we can just remove them. Like when there are zeros, we can just delete them, right? Here as well. Delete and delete. So, and this would now tell us that if we have a look at this, the men swear more. But if you look at the distribution, it's essentially only speakers between 19 and 33 that use swear words, right? Um, for the older speakers, yes, um, the women swear, the men don't. But the frequencies are so rare that you can basically say that uh, in general, uh, swearing is restricted to the age group of uh, 19 to 33. And men are more using more swear words relative to uh, women. So that would now be the answer to our research question, right? Okay, let me just wrap up because that was a very complex session, right? So I'm going to stop this now. So let us come to the key points and the outlook of today's lecture. So what you've learned or what I've shown you here is how to extract words from a corpus. We've then pro processed uh, the corpus data or the data that we obtained from the corpus. We've combined quick results, so the instances that we found in the corpus with speaker information. We've calculated the relative frequencies and visualized the results, right? And what you've seen today, you can easily transfer to analysis of other phenomena uh, or other words, other uh, things, um, and apply this corpus-based type of analysis to other investigations. And next week, what we're going to do is we'll go, we're going to explore and learn more about regular expressions. Um, so when you used the asterisk today, then that was actually a regular expression. And we do that so they can find and remove patterns from corpus data more efficiently, right? So that's what we're going to focus on next week. All right. So I hope you liked today's lecture. All the best. See you soon, Martin.